Well, yes, hi, I'm very happy to be here. I have to say about this that I only found out yesterday evening at 11 p.m. that I would do this talk. So accordingly, I kind of like wrote some slides this morning, so don't be surprised if not everything is perfect. About a month ago, I would have thought that I wouldn't have to do a talk like this. Unfortunately, the topic of data retention has come into the spotlight again. And unfortunately, it's especially the social democrats that are quite involved in this. So so first of all, a quick disclaimer, I'm a member of the Social Democrats and um, secondly, I'm a net politics member of the Social Democrats and active, quite active, especially in that area. And sometimes I think this, why did I do this? It's not always easy. We've done a lot of good things in the last few years. We have started a good productive discourse where we're talking about how to um, create the digital future, how to frame it. We've, look, we've been looking forward and then these things happen. So, but before talking about data retention, maybe a quick side note, um, I'm not going to explain what data retention is. I think you probably all know about this. Rather, I'd like to do a quick historical discourse on the German Social Democrats and thus explain to you why a lot of Social Democrats is think that it's really important to prevent the data retention law. So, Social Democrats are the oldest party in Germany. Um, they've existed for more than 150 years. They were, some people say they were founded in 1863. That's generally what's considered to be their founding date. And then they moved a lot forward and backwards with August Bebel and Wilhelm Liebknecht when finally in 1860 and, and when the socialist law was implemented in Germany, these, this name also came about. So under Bismarck we had the socialist law. That's a law against the incredi quote unquote incredibly dangerous demands of the social democrats. Before we had had um, an attack on the on Wilhelm the second when that was supposed Wilhelm the first that was supposedly do, uh, committed perpetrated by social Democrats so in that time based on this law it was already sufficient to be at a um, at a meeting of social Democrats and you would already be persecuted it didn't even matter if you weren't a member. So let's go a step further in Nazi Germany uh, you had the mission law and the SP, the Social Democrats were the only party that voted against this specific law in the parliament. There's this uh, incredibly important quote from Otto Wells, you can take freedom and our lives, but you cannot take our honor. So after this law had been implemented, then the um, Social Democrats were officially banned in Germany as well um, as an enemy of the people. So Social Democrats were persecuted, arrested, and also sent to concentration camps. A further part of Social Democrats' history is how Social, is the Social Democrats in the GDR. There, after the end of the Second World War, the Soviet Union um, forced the Communist Party and the Social Democrats into a union. Some participated in that, not all of them did. Some, some were fleeing to the West, others were arrested, others were even killed. Some were in certain um, important uh, certain very well known prisons. So these are three parts of social democrats' history that are very much co concerned with individual freedom and very much linked to individual freedom. So if you look at the very basic principles, freedom, solidarity, equality of the social democrats, and the things that this, um, the commission of the social democrats wrote down on basic freedoms and the basic principles and the basic principle of freedom, they say that freedom means the possibility to live based on based on your own principles. So, for f Social Democrats, freedom is something that is incredibly important because they experience themselves what it means when your freedom is limited. So, hmm, how do I draw the line back to the data retention law? That's not that easy. 
Aber auch nur ganz kurz die Geschichte der Vorratsdatenspeicherung. So again, this is not so easy. I'm just going to have a quick look at the history of the data retention law. It started with the EU guideline that was um, a harmonization guideline, and that was supposed to harmonize telecommunications um, providers and telling them that they all um, supposed to retain data for about the same amount of time. So based on this guideline, the Social Democrats and the Christian Democratic Union introduced data retention in 2007 in Germany, so it was not introduced by, um, the Federal, by the Christian Democrats and the Liberals, but really my party as well. So they were saying, well, we only do the lower part, it's only six to seven months. So that was implemented in Germany, but in 2010 the federal court um, said that it's uh, not in accordance with the German basic law. So at that time the legislation on the data retention was cancelled. And then Again, we had a bit of time that went, and then here, exactly here in the station, in 2011, we had a meeting, a convention of the whole social social democrats. At that time, the social democrats didn't even have a position on the data retention law. So, what social democrats did in 2007 in the parliament, there was something that happened in the vacuum. So, at the time, there was an appeal from the youth section of the Social Democrats against data retention, um, and this was and this was uh, repealed right away. And then again, we had a lot of representatives that were voting for data retention services. Then we had some kind of a compromise, another appeal. And this was something that was based on the guideline of the European Union guideline. And the uh, Social Democrats also said that they wanted a revision of this very EU guideline. Then the CDU um, liberal, liberal coalition ended, and then we had a coalition agreement between the Social Democrats and the Christian Union, where it says we will implement the EU guideline based on the usage of telecommunication data, that's how we avoid um, a fine that we would have to pay under the European Commission. So in the coalition treaty, they agreed upon on implementing this very guideline because this guideline is also putting pressure and forcing Germany to pretty much implement um, data retention law. So we as net politicians were not very satisfied with it. In the end, this guideline existed and we kind of needed to implement it. The Liberals avoided this for a couple of years, but now it seems that it was supposed to be implemented at some point. But then we had um, a ruling by the European Court in, 2000, in 2014 that said that this guideline was actually illegal because it was violating the basic right to privacy, private and family life, and it also um, violated the principle of... So this was quite a blow to everyone who was supporting data retention retention law. So this means that actually in the European level, the data retention law is pretty much dead. So it's going to be very difficult to find another another um, another hole, to a loophole to kind of circumvent this European court um, ruling. So we also have to say again that the ruling in Germany by the German constitutional court was not as strict. So they said that um, data retention law and the way it was implemented in Germany at the time was not okay, but they never rejected it in the same way that the European court did. Ja. VDS lehne ich entschieden ab, verstößt gegen Recht auf Privatheit und I'm against Kein the Gesetz, keine EU-Richtlinie, twitterte der Bundesjustizminister Heiko Maas im Dezember letzten Jahres. In Dezember last year. And within several interviews, Heiko Maas uh, was saying uh, similar things that he's against the data retention law. And now we could take care of progressive uh, contents and um, look at what the party line is saying. And so to summarize, um, the rulings of the European Court, um, they said something against the ruling and um, there is no legal grounding for it. And also the SPD said something that, the, that there is no legal standing for it this new ruling.
Then there was in March this year an interview with uh, Sigmar Gabriel, and he said that I'm not since now uh, for the data retention law, but um, my own opinion on this is that I don't want to close my eyes in front of the reality. So de Maizière and Heiko Maas should make a new proposal. And this is not going to be done overnight, because it's way too complicated to do that. And it doesn't make sense to just propose something, because otherwise it might not get passed anyways. Otherwise, it might not be able to go past the European Court of Justice or the German Constitutional Court. Oh, um, that's a slide that I just like, or just like that I didn't put that there. So, yes, now we have guidelines to the, for the implementation of a pressure to um, save certain data. Well, in the end, this is still data retention law. There's a few differences. I don't want to go into detail here. You can look this up on several different websites. Still, like, the, the length of data retention will be less, only 10 to 4 weeks. No emails are supposed to be saved, but that's complete well, bullshit. Then you'll just uh, send your emails um, with an American provider, then you would have not have been saved anyway. So there won't be profiles of people, how are they moving, where they're going, but again, like, they will still be saving location data. And somehow people who, buy based on their job, are keeping secrets are supposed to be safe anyway, but well. So the qu one question I'm coming back to is one question I haven't asked in the beginning. Does this, do social democrats want data retention law? Is this something that fits in with the DNA of the um, of social democrats? I'm not only a member of the social democrats, but I'm also a member of the 64 an association for digital progressiveness. And we already created um, somehow of an e ideal appeal um, and we will have a party convention, a small party convention on June 20th in Berlin. And in this appeal um, that we have written, which you can look up online under spdvds.d-64.org, we said that we want, we will demand the um, the party to go away from re-implementing the data retention law at this party convention. So um, the feedback we've gotten so far is quite good. Um, the uh, SPD Berlin has already um, implemented this appeal as well. And we have gotten a lot of support from, for example, Dortmund, Bonn, Aachen, Münster, um, the youth part, youth part of the uh, Social Democrats. So several local associations are supporting this appeal as well. So already we have a lot of people who are supporting this idea um, on the German level. So of course you, this all is all going to take time for all, all these people to actually support this, and it's going to take a long time, but considering the short time we've had so far, it's already worked quite well. And until the 18th of May, these things can still happen. But there's not only this appeal, but there are also decisions that have been made by a lot of federal state parts of the Social Democrats that have um, taken a clear stance against data retention law. So, for example, the people in North and Westphalia, Schleswig-Holstein, Berlin, Saxony, Bremen, Saarland, Mecklenburg, Popperin, Bavaria have all said um, at party conventions on federal state level that no, they do not want to vote for but against data retention law. That means that the basis of the Social Democrats doesn't really want the state retention law. But how is this going to continue? What's up next? So you know the structure, um, how it works. No law leaves the parliament as it went in. So there's no text for this law yet. There's not even a draft. It's going to. It's supposed to come up in the next days. 
So supposedly the first hearing where the parliament looks at this is supposed to be in the first week in, before the party convention. So there's the first hearing, second hearing, third hearing. So there's people who are trying to prevent us from discussing the data retention law at the party convention because they're claiming that a party convention cannot override cannot override decisions that have been made by another institution, by another meetup that is supposedly um, higher up. But this is um, actually a decision from 2011, and that is based on a guideline, and we're saying that this decision uh, this decision does not have any legal basis anymore because this guideline, this EU guideline, does not exist anymore because of the European Court of Justice. So also especially based on the developments of the past years when you had the NSA leaks and Snowden, it's also obvious that this decision would not come through anymore, this decision for data retention law. So again, 2011, it was actually quite close. There, were only, there was only a few votes difference. The majority was quite narrow. So if the convention took a clear stance against data retention law, then the um, federal government could actually not vote for data retention. It should not be voting for data retention. So this convention is pretty much um, a possibility to actually prevent a data retention law in Germany, maybe the last chance. So I have to say, well, I called the session well, last chance because I personally don't believe that the, European, the Constitutional Court is not going to prevent the data retention law again. I think that maybe the chance of that happening is about 40 percent because the conditions that the Constitutional German Court came up with were not as strict as, that, as those that were written down by the European Court of Justice. So it's possible that a new data retention law would actually be accepted by the Constitutional Court. So the thing we should focus on is that this law should not be implemented in the first place. Now the question is what can you do? If you are members of the Social Democratic Party, of course, take it up with the representatives. But everybody else, of course, you can also talk to the organizations, um, the local organizations, because unfortunately at the convent there's mostly delegates. Not all of them, but most of them. And I have just one thing I'd like to ask. I know, I understand that you might not want to, uh, that you're not enamored with the Social Democrats at the moment, but please, if you discuss this, remain calm and bring the argument of, the, of, of freedom. So there's not many that know as much about data retention like, like you do. So I think that's the point we need to emphasize. And the history of social democracy in Germany is very important to many members of the Social Democratic Party. So arguing that you're questioning one of the basic principles of humanism, which social uh, democrats are based on, and you invert that and you say everybody could potentially be a criminal or maybe a terrorist, that is quite a, a thing. Um, I do not believe that data retention laws are going to bring forth the police state. But it's even rather tame here compared to other countries. But I believe it's a paradigm shift, and that paradigm shift is what many of us here within the party can be convinced to, to, to turn against the data retention laws. And any good talk about the Social Democratic Party always has a Willy Brandt quote. And this is also my last slide, and then we can follow up with the Q&A. Willy Brandt said in his last speech in 1987, German Social Democrats can never stand for uh, impairments of freedom. When in doubt, for freedom. Wenn jemand noch eine Frage hat, sehr gerne. Ah, hier vorne fangen wir gleich mal an. Ähm, ich, ja, Tobias Schwarz, eine Frage. One question. The, to me, it seems that there is a large danger of when the convent decides against the data retention laws that might turn against their chairman. So, how, how likely do you think it is that the Social Democratic Party will 
um, elect a new chairman to count the, the data retention law. Okay, I, I might have to, to um, defend the chairman here a little. There are some points of the same opinion of him. Um, two days ago, there was a reception of the Social Democratic Party, and he said a silent party would be a dead party. That's what he so I can only encourage him to talk about it, because otherwise we would be a silent party. I believe that if the mandatory data retention is rejected at the convent, um, nobody would actually have to take their head. That's not such an important topic. It is for us, but for the public, it's not as important as we would like it to be. And that's why I believe that, of course, if the convent rejects the, the mandatory data retention laws, that would be a vote against uh, the current leadership. And there would be some articles about that. They talk about it for three or four months, three or four days. Uh, they would somehow have to um, tell that to their coalition partner, but I think life goes on. Life will go on. Maybe a slightly naive question. How did this thing came, come up again? There's the saying Charlie Hebdo, the terror attacks in France, that where they had mandatory data retention. So who profits from bringing this up again? Well, of course, this is lots of speculation. I guess there's several arguments. Or, um, what they think are arguments. I think that the Social Democratic Party could, lots, could get lots of points in the coalition contract. Um, the Christian Socialist Party have their... Uh, the toll charge. Um, and the, the Christ Democrats don't really have anything, anything big. And I mean, you all know that uh, data retention doesn't really help anything. It's it's a symbolic thing. So that then they can claim to have done everything against terror. So it is kind of a discussion. Well, we don't want to. We want to try everything to prevent terrorism. I think that's their their argument. Hi, you said that the German Constitutional Court is probably not going to stop it this time. What about the European Court? Well, it doesn't really matter because they cannot influence national law, not, not primarily. And thus, I think that the European Court can cannot okay the, the current form of data retention law, but it has to reach the uh, reach court first. So it needs to, the prerequisites to reach that, and that is not currently the pay. Um, I'm not a, a lawyer, um, so I, I can't say anything final about this, but I don't think it's a topic for the European Court. I have a question. I'm a member of the Social Democratic Party. The probability that the party convent is going to reject the data retention law is going towards zero. So the law will come because it's a it's an organ that consists of mostly professional politicians, and it will be very hard for them to vote against their chairman. So the question I ask myself is, what do we do as a social democratic party after our party has um, supported the data retention law. Well, I agree in the small part here. It's not clear that debating it will result in, um, in rejecting the data retention law, but I'm not as pessimistic as you. I think we can still do some things. Also, it's up to all of us um, how we talk to the delegates and what the engagement inside the party looks like, who's going to raise their voice. Um, I already mentioned there's a lot of um, decisions on the uh, state level, uh, federal level, and nobody can really tell what's, what's coming afterwards. If we knew, then 
einstecken. Aber um, if you knew the, the politicians who care about the internet, like myself and asking by. Uh, could probably not do anything sensible about that. So I also have another idea. There's still um, a proposal by Julia Reda, Reda, I think, from 2006, because that's when she left the uh, Social Democrats because of the data retention law. I think there should definitely be some pressure that should be put on the Social Democrats. But Julia Reda actually left the Social Democrats um, back then because of this data retention law. And I think that, well, it's quite good that you're here and there should be some uh, some problems within the uh, social democrats, people from within the social democrats that go against this. Um, yes, I think that there's a good development within the party, and I hope that at some point the last person in an important function that has an important function, an important post within the party, will realize that this is something that doesn't work that this is not something that's supposed to work, and I really am not giving up hope that this is going to work, that we can prevent this. So, hello, can you say something about how the Constitutional German Court um, said that data retention was, why did the Constitutional Court say that the con data retention law was illegal, and why this is something that might be circumvented this time? Well, the Constitutional Court, other than the European Court of Justice, well, well, they did use Article 10 of the Basic Law, but they said that if this law was to be implemented again, they kind of gave you a few rough conditions on how a new law would look like. They should, they for example, demanded more um, data protection and the threshold for access to this data to be higher. I'm not saying that the Constitutional Court will definitely accept this law. There's a lot of people who say, well, the Constitutional Court is going to cancel this law anyone is going to declare it unconstitutional. But in my opinion, maybe it's like 50 50, 60 40. But but the Constitutional Court already wrote down certain conditions for the, for the data retention law, and it looks like this law is kind of going to be based on the conditions that the court set out in the past. Another question. There are people who are trying to implement data retention law already before the party convention. Can you say anything about that? Well, yeah, as I mentioned, the first hearing on this law is actually going to happen before, in the week before the party convention, but one hearing is probably not going to be enough for a law like this. So it's not 100% impossible, but that would be quite quick. Usually we were already supposed to have a first draft last week, but we still don't have this because everyone knows that how hard it's going to be to kind of circumvent the constitutional court ruling from the few years ago. So first, let's wait for the draft and then see. But yeah, definitely, there's people who are trying to speed this, up, speed this up, speed up this process. And that's especially sad. Again, I would like to quote our chairman who, who said, um, a silent party is a stupid party, I think. So according to this, I really hope that we're not going to be silent, but that we will have time to discuss this. So I think that, yeah, exactly. Um, time's up. Um, thanks for you. Thanks to you for uh, coming up with this talk at the last minute and uh, thank you very much.